Rebound pain isn't a new phenomenon in regional anesthesia, but we do seem to be paying more attention to it in recent years, which is a good thing. Much of the fundamental knowledge regarding rebound pain has been summarized in a few recent review articles which I refer you to for further reading. Here though I'll briefly summarize the key facts from these articles, but I'll also spend the majority of the time discussing some of the more recent literature that is pertinent to the preventative management of rebound pain. There are different definitions that have been proposed in the literature, but I do think that the simplest and most practical one is this functional definition which we proposed in our review article from 2020, which is that rebound pain is severe post-operative pain that emerges with the resolution of an effective nerve block, that is, one that was until then providing excellent analgesia. There are a few things to note about this definition. First, that the pain has to be severe intensity to be called rebound pain. Most studies will use pain scores of 7 or greater as part of their definition. Second, rebound pain should be viewed as an unmasking of the underlying noxious stimuli that's a normal and expected response to any tissue injury. And these nociceptive impulses are not perceived until the conduction block of regional anesthesia wears off. It's important to note that there is no evidence that regional anesthesia causes a pathological hyperalgesia, by which I mean a truly exaggerated activation of nociceptors in the area of injury. Instead, it may be largely a perceptual phenomenon, a contrast bias as illustrated by the experiment of dunking your hand in lukewarm water after it's been in very cold or hot water for a while. And this is supported by the fact that pain scores following emergence after a general anesthetic are often as high as the pain scores that follow offset of a regional anesthetic block. The third point is that rebound pain is primarily seen with regional anesthesia techniques that provide complete or near-complete analgesia in surgeries that are associated with significant pain. And these include brachial plexus blocks for surgical anesthesia of the upper limb, but also regional analgesia after shoulder surgery and popliteal nerve blocks for foot and ankle surgery. Here are some other important things to be aware about rebound pain. It's actually quite common, with a 40 to 50% incidence observed in multiple studies. At the same time, even though it is common, it isn't inevitable. It occurs in 40 to 50% of ambulatory peripheral nerve blocks, but flipping that around, it means that 50 to 60% don't experience rebound pain. And the logical question then is, what predicts whether or not someone will experience rebound pain? Who should we be worrying about? Several risk factors have been identified for severe pain on resolution of regional anesthesia. Most of these are intuitive and not that surprising. We already mentioned as part of the definition that rebound pain occurs following regional anesthesia techniques that provide complete or near complete analgesia. The severity of post-operative pain is another factor. Bony surgery in particular carries a higher risk of rebound pain compared to soft tissue surgery because it's generally associated with worse pain. The presence of severe preoperative pain and opiate use has also been identified as another risk factor. And other risk factors include patient characteristics, such as a tendency for catastrophizing, female gender, and younger age. The takeaway is that we should anticipate rebound pain in any patient in whom we perform a single injection peripheral nerve block that will provide surgical anesthesia or near complete analgesia. And if there are one or more of these other risk factors present, the likelihood of rebound pain is higher, and we should consider implementing as many preventative strategies as possible. In the next video, we'll take a closer look at these.